What was that? I said Andy kind of looks like Tom Cruise a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Dog! You paused at a bad time, dog. <laughs> paused on the hog. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the first ever pilot episode of Trace Papas, where three, maybe two, sometimes one, a bunch of dads get the, get together, talk about dad stuff, talk about... Uh, but we also might have some friends on, you know, some, some homies that are around want to shoot the shit. There isn't a specific topic for this this show. I mean, we can we can be talking about Dick one episode and be talking about music the next or gaming. You might even see us play some Call of Duty. You might even see us play some chess. But anyways, this is the pilot episode. My name is Wes. Um, I'm Top Shelfers. I've been around for a long time doing stupid podcast shit. And uh, yeah, I'm one of the three co-hosts. And I will toss it up to the two people above me, Bird cutlass and they got a whole bunch of ak's as well go ahead you go first <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait i, I want to go first AKA cutlass and you can't go first i'm going first steven aka cutlass um i play lots of video games never done a podcast before it's my first time ever um i'm also a dad of soon to be three so that's gonna be fun uh now you go Okay. Hi, I'm Bird. Howdy. Perfect. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, Cutlass <laughs> forgot the one main part. He couldn't pull out of a 100-yard driveway. Definitely not. <laughs> it's impossible. You know, I heard once, the, the smaller the snake, the deadlier the venom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I cannot confirm or deny that. I can. We'll confirm <laughs> tonight. We'll confirm. We'll confirm tonight. it. Tonight. Figure out how to zoom in this webcam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how many zooms do you have to get in the webcam to make the penis look big? <laughs> it's at four hundred percent magnitude. I hear it's all about shadows and uh, uh, and and how far you can zoom in. Yeah. It, and kind of like based off like if you kind of like put your hands at like a weird angle and make your hands look really small, man, looks mm -hmm. giant with small hands. Yeah. I have those little, uh, you ever seen those finger, like they look like hands, but you put them on the tips the of your finger fingers. Hands, yeah. yeah. Dude, it makes it look ginormous. It's crazy. <laughs> Just like this. That's why I only date women with really small hands. It's a, it's a self-esteem thing. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think yeah. Uh, I, I don't really know what the the plan is as far as how often we're going to do this or, you know, if this is always just going to be face cam or, you know, if if it's going to be, hey, we might play some Call of Duty and shoot the shit like some of these other channels or, you know, just kick back, maybe invite some homies on. But I think really we've had some of the best fun when it's just, you know, midnight, one o'clock. We're shooting the shit, talking about God knows what, and I don't know. Time just flies by at that point. Or talking about God knowing what. Dude, God knows a lot. He knows what? Yeah. He knows what He knows what I'm thinking. And right now... And he knows when you're awake. And he knows when you've been bad or good, so it'd be good for goodness sake. Oh, wait. That's Santa Claus. That's Satan. Oh, yeah, Santa Claus. That's Satan. <laughs> They're close enough. I think I'd rather have Satan like breaking into my house than like a elderly gentleman with a white beard. Yeah, I can see, I can see why that would be an issue. Yeah, all uh, oiled up, lathered from head to tippy toe, <laughs> six pack out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Trying to find <laughs> the kids. Trying to find the kids. <laughs> Are they asleep? Breaks out a cigarette. <laughs> you guys got the milk and cookies. Santa's feeling kind of horny tonight. <laughs> oh man! Oh, shit. No, we're gonna we're gonna have fun though. It's gonna be exciting. I do all I do have topics to uh, to bring up to kind of break the ice as far as like you know. It, always starting a podcast is hard. This is my. 
seventh podcast that I've started. And the first episodes are always kind of, you know, kind of awkward. Everyone's trying to find their voice. But I, I've learned that there's ways to break the ice. There's like, there's like general ideas that everyone likes to talk about. Um, I think first things first is, <laughs> well, this might be a sensitive subject to start, but I believe we're all sports fans. <laughs> yeah, where are we going with this? I I think sports is a great jumping on point the spot right away <laughs> to uh to discuss you know it, it, it's a good icebreaker you know hey i'll first admit like it's the playoffs right now and i'm a packers fan i didn't even get to the playoffs and and arguably i have one of the best quarterbacks in the whole entire league yeah um if he wants to keep playing shit man if i was aaron Rodgers, i'd just sit around and get high all day True. I would. Yeah. If I had a, get more ayahuasca, just relax. Yeah. If I had ayahuasca at my beckoning call, I probably wouldn't. You can only hear me. What is? Wait. What? Oh no. How do I make it no. to I can hear all of you guys. You gotta just turn on your your desktop audio because it should be or connect the desktop audio to whatever your headset is. Oh shit. Um. You're right. Hold on, because you're going through my headphones right now. Yeah, your mic's also kind of choppy. I don't know if it's on Bird's End as well or not. A little bit. You gotta have another audio source. Sounds like every like at the end of your. Well, that's definitely not what he meant to do. <laughs> Wait, can you hear me? No. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh. Well, I mean, I guess it sucks for him. I guess it's two. It's Dos Papas now. Yeah, now it's just two men instead of two. Oh, yep. Hey, what up, dude? Yeah. So, sorry, guys. I'm kind of fucking up a little bit here. Give me just one second. Oh, it's second. okay. So your audio sounds it's... a lot better now. Give me just one second here. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's just the first episode, Jitters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... First episode, okay, you're not second. really going to come, but, you know, second or third episode, you probably should. You got to have another audio source. Source, add link. Link it to desktop audio. Boom. <gasps> oh, dude. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be able to show my face while I make that sound. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Changes the whole thing. Dang it. <laughs> I made them. Uh, I missed it. I missed it. Okay, hold what? on. I missed the fucking the face of you doing that. Oh, I can't even see Top's face anymore. It's kind of sad. Display capture, <laughs> audio input capture. <laughs> no, audio output capture. That means I can. It's just a a loading that circle. Oh, uh, that sucks. That just means I can make funny faces all night. Yeah, I can still hear you though. I can smell you. I can smell. You. Source. Why does oh, it smell god. like beef? Oh god. What's happening? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, this is not going good, guys. I mean, it's a good thing it's a pilot episode. If this was episode two, I would be pissed. <laughs> Exit out of that. Okay, there we go. Audio. Got it. Here we go, dude. We're getting it. We're learning. Hey. Desktop audio, mic audio, audio output capture. Oh, I can see you now. Oh, fuck. I was doing some, some fucking such <laughs> shit, too. <laughs> Man, my beard's getting, getting pretty All right. long. Can, any, can you guys hear now? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, but you got to turn your face cam back on here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, there I am. Hi. Dude, this is... Uh, oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go. I hear these dudes now. Yeah! Let's hey. go! I did Howdy. it! We them dudes. Let's go. The first uh, 
few minutes of that is going to be just me talking. Sick. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. There's gonna be pauses of you just going. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no penises. <laughs> yeah, penises. Yeah. It's really small. <laughs> <laughs> Magnify it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four hundred percent. Yeah. Hey, I'm not a shower. I'm a grower. That's cool. At least you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Yeah, try being neither. See how life <laughs> goes for you. Well, I've never made over a hundred hundred k a year, so you got you got Dude. that way over me. I haven't either. <laughs> oh, I thought you have. Now it's close. close. Oh yeah. That makes you look like you're ninety seven years old. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's wild. <laughs> it makes your beard like gray. I'm an old fuck. Oh, geriatric. Uh, so what are you guys doing this stream? Um, we're probably we're we're doing sort of a little podcast here. Top, if you want to explain now that everybody can hear. Yeah. So <laughs> this is our our pilot episode of Trace Papas, three dads and maybe two dads sometimes or, or one, but it, it's just gonna be topical. We're we're gonna have people on. We're gonna talk about what's going on in the world. Not politically, not no, not a political podcast. Just a uh, the old school vibe of like when homies get together and just have a good time. You know, I feel like a lot of that's missing in today's day and age. Everyone's so serious. Like, don't you miss those days of just hanging out with like your three, four, five friends, and you're just you spend the whole night and you laugh so hard your stomach hurts, but you also like learn new things about life, like like different perspectives on how people live and like you to, you go you leave gaining something but also having some laughs that's kind of what i think it should be in the long run he said oh by the way you guys are talking to a syntax he said ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, talk about justin roiland if that's not political oh well he uh he's not gonna be on rick and morty anymore i know that I'm going to be real with you. I have no idea who that is. That's the dude who does Rick and Morty, the voice of both of them and the writer and all that shit. Oh. There was some allegations. I mean, I don't know the whole thing. I wouldn't be the person to really ask, but I guess there was a, it was like a SA and false imprisonment charge, which I don't really know exactly what that is, but it's like, when you cause harm and like don't allow someone to leave or something along those lines, apparently it happened in 2020 and it's surfacing now and he's in the legal battle now, but he said apparently there's evidence. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I assume he's probably not going to come back from this. It's pretty serious charges. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I think, I mean, there's evidence, but he hasn't been proven guilty yet. I don't care about Justin Roiland. Like, I, Rick and Morty's an okay show. But, like, if Adult Swim is literally Xing Rick and Morty out after season seven, there's probably some bad shit going on. So, they would, I, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't just jump the gun to just X something as big as that, you know, so quickly. Well, I guess what I guess what Adult Swim said is they're going to continue producing Rick and Morty, but have cut ties with Justin Rowland. So to, uh, he made high on life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. It. That's I was like, dude, this gun sounds like Morty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The game company is Squanch Games from the little Squanch dude in the show. Uh, I I assume that Adult Swim knows something more than maybe the public does because. Like like Bird said, like you're cutting one of the biggest shows, like popularity wise, and or not cutting it, but getting rid of the main dude. And I don't think they would do that if it was just a hunch, you know. I feel like that he probably is guilty, regard and regardless of what kind of information comes out, like it's hard to come back from that. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's you look at someone so like like Louis C.K. who had those allegations uh how many years ago it feels like forever but 
he's still like from what I know or what I've read, he's still kind of not doing too great. Well, it, it's funny. You br- I was actually going to bring it up. He's the first person I've seen that kind of has a road to redemption. So he has, he has a special coming out next month on his website. And then the following month he's doing a special, I think for one of the big companies. And uh, I heard his joke where he talked about like how everyone knows his thing now and how shitty it is to like he even says he's like obama knows my thing and he's like do you know how hard it is to live your life knowing that every single bu- person knows your thing yeah <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty fucked up th- there's more to it that i don't want to repeat because it's fucking it's a little uh a little saucy but i don't know that's the thing is like i think people fuck up and not talking about justin Rowland, talking about maybe Louis C.K. or other people. I think people fuck up, but there's no road to redemption that is offered in, you know, today's day and age. Some people don't deserve a redemption road. Some people, I think, do. And it just, I don't know. It's a weird world we live in. I think Louis kind of, I'm not saying what he did was okay, but he always asked for permission. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> there is that, you know. <laughs> is it weird? Yes. Yeah. Did you ask first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was also thinking with the whole Justin Roiland thing. I have seen so many good Morty and Rick impersonators. So if they do have to find somebody to fill in for episodes, it's not going to be fucking hard. No. Like not. so many good just voice actors or impressionists that are just insane. And well, and he's, yeah. that shows like super self aware, right? Like they always make jokes about themselves or about how the show, like the community is. So like I, I could totally see them doing something like, oh, the the original or Rick and Morty from this dimension died. This is Rick and Morty from dimension whatever, and they sound just slightly different. Like that's their quirk, you know? Like yeah. right. they could like they built that into their show. Like they could totally right. do something like that. That reminds me too. Dan Harmon, the other guy that does the Rick and Morty show or voices or whatever, he was also like in some deep shit, like at least over a decade ago, over oh. some like shorts, like short films that he drew that were just like really not very PC. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've seen those, but yeah, they Dan were kind of. Is that the is that the guy that did like Fairly Odd Parents and all that shit, or is that a different Harmon? Hart, Hart, Hartman. That's a different guy. Oh. <clears throat> I can't think of what that guy's name is, though. Well, I know Dan Harmon does Rick and Morty. He's like the other co-creator. But doesn't Dan Harmon do uh, the D&D show? Harmon's Quest. That I've never seen it. Or even heard of it. Yeah. I think it's like a D&D show. I could be wrong. I, I don't know. There's... That's the thing. There's so much damn content out in the world now. I, it's hard to keep up with everything. I don't even know yeah. if I've, I don't even he, know if I've he... seen all the Rick and Morty. Hold on. I'm, I'm reading chat. I'm reading chat. It says, I think he's talking about Rick and Morty as a like you know as continuing on and stuff. He says, is it going to be now linked with bad stuff? He also has a sexual harassment thing. Um. Oh, he did Community. Gotcha. Community. But the sexual harassment thing was kind of cleared up. Harmon's Quest is a big thing, too. It yeah. is a D&D show. Yeah, it, I don't know. It, it's it, I, I think that they're shitty people, and we try to pretend like these you know, famous people wouldn't do shitty things, but they still do. And, oh, yeah. You know, fuck them. They all do. Yeah, fuck them. I mean... Do. It's you do shitty things, you get shitty, you get shitty results. I don't know. It's just kind of how it is. I wouldn't. My, honestly, I don't. I've watched Rick and Morty a little bit. It's not my thing, but I don't think that them replacing 
Royland would be a big deal if you, if they just did exactly what you said. If they just made it seem like Rick and Morty went into some fucking alternate alternate dimension, they get fucking blasted by some fucking, you know, people who are them but in their dimension and they're like who the fuck are you guys you guys aren't the real rick and morty and they fucking murk them and then there you go yeah they've done an episode just like that (laughs) yeah yeah just totally do do it it again again. yeah do it again except this time the actual rick and morty lose and then the show continues on with these guys right yeah i don't I, i don't know i'm not I'm not super. I mean, I, I I feel bad for the victims of whatever he's got going on. They obviously need some sort of justice. But I, I personally don't really give a shit about him as a person or the show. Yeah. I mean, it's I, I've watched it and yeah, there's some funny stuff, but a show doesn't trump a piece of shit, you know? Right. Even though some of that community really, really wants to say that oh, he's this or that, like he's this. You know, he doesn't deserve it. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, anybody who's going to do some shit like that is definitely a piece of shit and deserves whatever they're getting. Yep. I agree. (laughs) Whoa. Oh, uh, bless. Bless. Oh, it was was just a loud cough, my bad. Oh. uh... Stay bless. (laughs) Yeah. Hashtag stay blessed. Uh, now, we were kind of talking about sports. I didn't want to get too far away from that because I feel like we got to, you know. <laughs> He's all damn it. We got to talk bitch. about some of that. Um, <laughs> I was worried for a minute. We didn't even hear from Bird for like a full 48 hours. Dude, this guy fucking went MIA. Like, I needed some time, okay? You what? I just, I needed some time. Yeah. Um, we just, we so, just get off of a nine-hour phone call and then nothing for two days. <laughs> uh, it, so, like, I, I follow all these Dallas Cowboys pages and everything, and it was just, my feed is just flooded with, get rid of Dak, get rid of Mike McCarthy, get rid of Kellen Moore. I almost said Kellen Quinn. That's not the right guy. Nope. Um, get rid of him, too, though. Yeah, get rid of him. He sucks. Uh, but yeah, dude, like it was just for two days straight, just all Cowboys hate. And then even like suggested for you, it was like the San Francisco 49ers people like saying like, you know, we just smoked the Cowboys. We fucking knew we would. And, and then (laughs) then that following Monday, I go to watch Dr. Disrespect and he's the biggest 49ers fan, I guess. And his intro is like his regular intro, but he's voicing behind the intro, just going, how about them cowboys? How about them cowboys? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Like, I almost just shut the stream off because I was like, I don't want to fucking hear it. And then he proceeds to talk about how great the 49ers are for an hour. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I Fuck, didn't even man. know he does. Uh, he goes to the games and does like on field shit for the 49ers. Oh, yeah. They they treat him well from what he says. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, isn't I mean there's a couple of big streamers who are Cowboys fan, isn't Tim the Tatman and Yeah. Someone else. I know Tim the Tatman is. I'm not sure who else, but Yeah, <laughs> he didn't stream for like two days either. <laughs> it's tough, man. It, it's tough when I mean, you, you've been a sports fan your whole life. I don't know about you, Cutlass, if you've been how heavy you are into it. But, you know, when you, when, you have a, when you have a season and you're actually excited about it and you see that there could be the potential of winning, like, it fucking sucks. I mean, I still remember the biggest losses that I've ever had as a Packers fan. Philadelphia Eagles, Don McNabb, like 2000, what was it nine when McNabb threw for like 300, 400 yards in the AFC or in the NFC championship game? Was it? No, whatever game like heartbreak. Yeah, that was the, the championship game. Cause they ended up going to the super bowl and then getting destroyed by. Oh my God. It's, I can't remember who, but they lost. That was their, at the time, their first super bowl appearance, I think. Mm, yeah. I don't remember, but yeah, it was, they were projected to win everything and then got stomped in the Super Bowl. 
Or like the mm-hmm. year the Packers went 14 and 2 or whatever and they lost to the fucking Giants. Like and then the Giants went on to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, it sucks. So I mean, I I get where you're coming from. It's it's rough. Especially Cowboys have had some shit luck. They've had some <laughs> rough goes as far as playoff appearances. Oh, shit. I forgot I still had that on there. God damn it. Uh, Syntex says, OMG, Packers fan top. Mm. I love you, Dad. I have a <laughs> gift for you when we finally meet. Hell yeah. Uh, but meat, as like in, you know, steak. Oh, meat. that's the steak. <laughs> <laughs> Thick meat. <laughs> Damn it! I I gotta oh, fuck. I should have took that off for this. I don't want to be just hanging out and having to do push-ups. Oh yeah, the push-ups thing. God damn it! That should only be allowed when you're gaming. Because <laughs> yeah. here we're, we just got a chill vibe going on. We don't want you just be like, mm, so fucking Eagles rule, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I wish we still had McNabb. <laughs> Honestly, I would rather have Hertz over McNabb. Oh yeah, Hertz. Just the way that things are panning out, Hertz is just a fucking monster. Yeah, Hertz is animal. So let, let, it, let's ask all the fans' favorite question, Bird. You're given control of the Cowboys dynasty right now. What's like the first like three or four moves you'd make to try and alleviate whatever the issue is? Dude is the shittiest offensive coordinator, and I do oh, not know why they're keeping him around. Wait, what was the first bit you said? Oh, uh, get rid of Kellen Moore. Dude sucks ass. Yeah. I d- I'm not putting the blame on Mike McCarthy. I think Mike McCarthy is a great coach. He's shown it with the Packers. He took them to it. You know, he got them to a Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, he's a Super Bowl winning coach. And I, you know, it's more than I could say with like Jason Garrett. Or the Wade Phillips. Mm. Those guys sucked ass. The thing I like about uh, McCarthy is he actually shows emotion. Like, when something goes wrong, he gets fucking mad at his players. Or he just gets mad in general at the referees or whatever. Where, like, Jason Garrett, the carrot head, if, like, we get a holding call or PI or some bullshit, he just sit there like, Yeah, fair. You know, like the last thing I want to see is my coach just acting chill. Like, put your fucking players in place. You know, like get their heads right, get them fucking pumped. You're just acting like you're, they're, you know, they're your best friend or something. But so that'd be the first thing. Uh, the second thing, uh, we got to sign Pollard back. We got to have him run in at least seventy percent of the running plays. Zeke's got to take a back seat and a pay cut. What what happened there? Do you think that that was just a straight? I'm gonna perform until I get my payday, or is there something else going on? I think it was just that. A lot of like, just in general, like NBA, NFL, whoever. Once they get paid, they're just like, well, I don't gotta try as hard. I've you already saw, made my name. You saw that with Chris Johnson at Tennessee. He was one of the baddest motherfuckers on the <laughs> field. Got his huge payday and. Then what? Yeah, same thing with Todd Gurley. Yeah. Like, that dude was insane. And then gets his big paycheck, gets gets signed to a different team. Everybody thinks he's going to be the shit. And then just fucking, yeah, I'm going to take a back seat. It's crazy. Um, but, dude, Pollard broke his... I can't... I don't remember the tibia and fibia. Which one? Whatever one's the little one in your right leg. Or I guess it's in both legs, but he broke one of those in his right leg and he's got surgery on it. So that scares me that he's not going to be able to perform as well next season. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stay true to Dak. Interesting. I, th- I think Dak can do it. I just think he's got a bad offensive coordinator and maybe just needs some work. I know it's been so fucking long, and everybody has said we've we've had him since what 2018, and the most he's done has got us to like what four playoff. Burton is it six, four or six playoff, and we've lost the first round basically every time. 
which from... sucks, but I don't think it's entirely Dak's fault. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Well, I, I don't think it's ever <clears throat> just one person's fault. But as being a not a fan of the Cowboys, but obviously watching the games, he definitely is very inconsistent. Like there's some days where he looks like the best quarterback in the league, and there's some days where he's like, ah, is this, should this guy be benched for the rest of this game? And it's yeah. I mean, they performed really well without him, but I don't know if that's just because maybe the whole team is like that, where it's wishy washy. Or uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, the, the it's just it's. I want to stand behind Dak. I stood behind him when they picked him. I knew that like he was going to be the perfect back after Tony Romo gets hurt or retired or whatever. And then what? He went on and just destroyed. He fucking tore every team up. And he's got that caliber. I just think it was also the same thing with Zeke. He got paid and then just realized he didn't have to try as hard. Money, money does get... Money is a driving factor. It's hard not to. I mean, I I could totally understand where they come from, right? If I got paid a uh, hundred like, million, and you know that off season gets a little bit more entertaining versus you know staying focused, got more opportunity throughout the year that isn't football related. Kind of lose lose that passion. That when he broke his leg. He used to be like a dual threat, which was like really shitty for defenses because like they knew that he can th- throw the ball sometimes, at least back then before he broke his leg. And then also they also had to have somebody QB spying him at least, you know, because he was he could take off. But now he barely runs the ball because he doesn't want to get hurt again, which understandable, but it makes our play calling extremely predictable. Yeah. That's true. And then, what about you, Cutlass? You're a you're a flying high Eagles fan, right? <laughs> Look at me, I'm bird. <laughs> you are, are you into? Do you follow much, or are you just kind of Eagles oh, fan? Oh man, I'm just Eagles fan, dog. Yeah. Played for the Eagles when I was in high school. I yeah. Now I'm. Now I'm just an Eagles fan. <laughs> <laughs> I I have noticed one thing, at least with myself. It seems like as I get older, I get less interested in football and basketball. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just different hobbies or, you know, disappointment <laughs> every year. And I just don't want to keep getting disappointed. I, I don't know. Sorry, my wife is distracting me right now. <laughs> <My wife. laughs> sorry i do like the ufc though yes i like ufc like i like fighting. although i've been i've been working a lot but i have so i haven't been able to really focus on it as much as we were a few months ago but i do very much enjoy ufc me too i don't know it I think there is kind of a little bit of a lull in the UFC right now, though, in the sense of, like, there's a gap of, like, really crazy shit going on. Because I didn't really give – I don't give a fuck about Patty the Batty. I think he's very mid. He just has, like, a cool – like, a funny personality. Oh, dude, I love Patty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I love Patty, dude. See, I, yeah. I, I'm i not much of a fan of his. I am a fan of uh, Sean O'Malley. Yeah. I like him. I don't necessarily care for him as a person, but I do like his fighting. His fighting, he's very exciting to watch. Yeah. Sure. I think he's the first, though, UFC fighter that I feel like understands today's social media and tech. Like, he's oh, on yeah. all the funny podcasts. He does all the, the TikTok, right? Like, he's, like, entertaining outside of the ring with at least comedy-wise and then also exciting to watch when he's fighting. Yeah, I love how he uh, looks at comments. <clears throat> he'll look at comments on his videos and shit, and then he'll be like, oh, you're right. Whenever that guy was punching me in my face, I should have done this, and then he'll do an example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> just show you how stupid you sound, basically. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I mean, I I hate to admit it, but I'm really excited that John Jones is getting like a fourth a fourth revive of his career. And I mean, does he deserve it? Probably not, but goddamn is he the goat for a reason. Dude, you're really distracting me right now. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, hold on. You got fucking told. I think it's funny. <laughs> so yeah, how about them fucking eagles. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. He is our savior. A Lord and Savior. <laughs> um, well, this is a conversation that I feel like I'm not gonna have a lot to say in, but I wanted to talk to you guys about it. And that that's you're both into music, have been in band or bands, and then also there's like some new developments as far as potential working together. I just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm very much like I live vicariously through people who can make music because I just am very envious of the abilities. But like where did you guys like I kinda know birds like you know where he kinda started. But when did you get into music, like, like getting into performing, I guess? Because it's different when you go from like, you know, hey, I'm learning this instrument. Hey, I like playing this instrument. I like singing. And then like, hey, like I'm doing shows. Like there's like a big gap, I feel. Yeah, I never wanted to. So right now I'm a vocalist. I never wanted to do that ever. I fucking, I still don't like doing it. Like it's not something that i want to do i oh. always wanted to play guitar you know or play bass those are my two things that i always wanted to do and then when we first started our band it was me raw uh my buddy kyle and my buddy colton and my cousin vince colton was our vocalist and uh i played guitar i played rhythm guitar and raw played lead so that's how that started and that's what i liked to do <clears throat> But I had this fucking friend named Josh who also played guitar. And he was like, dude, you're fucking so good at singing and blah, blah, blah. You just need to do that. You need to do that. And then so we kind of started this little band with him. And so Josh was, is my friend. He, he's been my friend since kindergarten. So I, that's how I knew him. But we started a band with me, him, uh, this other dude, Cody, and then my friend Ryan. And... Uh, I was the vocalist in that. And then shit happened with my buddy Colton, and now I'm the vocalist in this band. So I just kind of got stuck with it. And I I personally don't think I'm very good at it, but everybody says that I'm good at it. So I You are good at it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually what I – that's the answer I get all the time. So what, okay, <clears throat> then what is it that you don't like about doing it? I don't like the way my own voice sounds. And I know, I realize that that's a problem with everybody that does that. <laughs> but it's, I, I don't know. I just, it's hard to get past that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I hate the way I sound just talking. I feel like I sound like nasally <laughs> and shit. So I can only imagine if I had to hear myself sing. <laughs> but like if isn't it reassuring when people tell you like no dude just shut the fuck up you're good no uh -oh. because because i've heard it so much that i think that like people are lying to me you know like mm. i feel like like you like you know when you see somebody that that drew a fucking picture and you're like <laughs> oh, that's that's kind of lame but then like they show you and you're like oh yeah that's sick i like it that's ah, what it feels like see, that's what it feels like but that might, that might not be a bad thing to – I don't know. I kind of think that's not a bad thing to have for yourself because then, like, you can kind of keep yourself in check. Because, I mean, we, we all know those bands that have, like, a lead vocalist who's a little bit too uh, 
egotistical. Oh, you yeah. know, kind of has thinks his shit stink doesn't stink, and <laughs> yeah. you know maybe being a little bit more grounded might be better in the long run. I don't know, man. It's yes and no, because at the same time, I kind of feel like I get in my own way because I get in my head about certain shit, and then I either a just don't do it or. I keep doing it because I know it's what, you know, the other dudes in the band want. So I keep doing it. But the whole time I just think it's fucking ass. <laughs> mm. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's really what it is. It's just I just need to get out of my own fucking head. Is really what it comes down to. But that's I was thinking about thing. this. You, you, you hear bands like uh, like Turnstile, right? a very like uniquely sounding singer. You know how many people probably told that guy like, dude, you sound like shit comparatively to like the standard, like screaming, yelling, whatever. And now they're huge. And like now yeah, I I've, I mean, them. yeah, I heard them playing at the gas station the other day. Like they were so playing wild. over the speakers at the gas station. <laughs> I was like, what? But I think, you know, as long as you just keep it uniquely you, you know, like, I think no matter what, there's always going to be somebody that's like, this guy sucks. Like, why is he even doing this? But like, I don't know. I think you sound good. Legit. Like, I'm not just saying that because I'm your friend. I think you <laughs> sound great. <laughs> well, I think, too, like, the reality is, is when you start getting haters is when you know you're doing something right. Yeah. That, sure. That's something that I've learned for sure is people are built to hate and I don't really understand it. Like, I don't think that I have that, that type of mentality, but I've mm. seen it like in so many facets, like it's like, like almost like an envious hate. Like I, I should be that guy or, you know, I could be better than that guy, but they don't do it. So then they just hate it. And it's, I think right. it's, I think it's kind of sad and embarrassing, but it's, I think that it's good in some facets, right? It's good to have people who can keep you in check and aren't going to be yes men. But at the same time, there is a point where people are just going to hate because they are jealous and just want to hate or they're haters. Cause it's funny. Yeah. I don't know, dude. Music is weird. It, there's so much steps and so much shit that you have to go through before you could even release anything. And it kind of sucks that we haven't yet. But we're just like, I we want to so bad, but finding the resources to do it and not have to pay an arm and a fucking leg, that's really hard. That's like the hardest part of the whole thing. It's easy to come up with shit and it's easy to like, like, uh, you know, it's easy to make shit, but it's just really hard to make it good, like quality wise, as, as far as music goes. Right. I, I, I want to. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say. I, I imagine today, at least in today's world too, it might be the easiest time to spread the song, like spread the music, once you have it. But everyone knows how easy it is to like spread music, so that barrier to entry, money wise, has just gone up. The yeah. supply's there, so the demand is expensive, or vice right. versa. The demand is there, so the supply is expensive. <clears throat> which sucks yeah like i, I think bird yeah <laughs> what i don't know i just saw you just kind of standing there or staring there so i was like oh, i wonder what bird's thinking about i was thinking about my homie that does this for fun and i think he gets paid to do it and i was telling you if we just get like individual tracks Mm -hmm. and get them polished up like he'll make it sound so good yeah yeah i told austin about that too i think that we'll try to work we could try to work on that this weekend we always meet up on you know on a weekend so either saturday or sunday but we've been doing it a lot saturday since my schedule got moved around so maybe we'll track one thing and then send it over to you and see if you can <laughs> do something to it but i was going to ask you because i know a lot of people whenever they record guitar specifically, they like to get the recording um, 
where it's just fucking acoustic basically like no effects or anything on it and then they add their own shit mm-hmm. would it be better that way or would it or would he like do you think he would like it where Austin put his own tone to it basically <clears throat> How would you be recording it? Would it be through a PC or yeah? Like okay, I mean, I think if you have Pro Tools, I think you you did say you have that. Um, I think that's what he uses also, but I think he has like some other programming shit. Um, I think either one would work honestly. Cool, hell yeah, yeah. I'll I'll get with him and see what he says. But I'm pretty sure that, like, all, all three of us are, we have, I think we have, I think we have eight songs total that are ready. Like, we got them fucking pretty much down to a fucking T. We just got to record them. And then after that, we could put together a five-song EP and be fucking golden, you know? Right. And, and the shit that we're working on now is not it's not necessarily like I wouldn't say it's great, you know, but it's just us trying to kind of figure out what direction we want to go in. So we're slowly kind of pushing towards one direction, which is what our two other, not the band, not the group one direction. God, please no. But, uh, (laughs) we're, we're slowly easing ourselves into a genre and I think that it's going to be fucking awesome. Super heavy. I have a question yeah. that kind of revolves around the whole entire thing. Is like, what's the steps that you guys have taken? Like, I know Bird, you've you've done a bunch of shows, and I know that you've also done a bunch of shows. Like, what are the steps to actually make it happen? Because I feel like a lot of people hear about individuals going and doing shows, or like, you know, hey, we're gonna go perform here, but like. I bet you there's tons and tons and tons of groups that want to do shows and just really have no idea like what even the first step is to make it happen. Um, in my first band, it was pretty easy. So we, we had all of our music and shitty recordings on MySpace. And so we had somebody reach out to us and say, Hey, you're from Utah. You're from Salt Lake. We're having, we have an open spot basically if you guys can make it. And then we played our first show. We were like 14. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that was, it was wicked, dude. Like, it was such a just unique feeling. Because before we were playing like garage shows or house shows. And it was simple because you could just do whatever you want. If you fuck up, it's like, whatever, just play the song again. Yeah. But when it got to the show, it was just, Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> our first show, our first show was kind of the same thing, except we knew uh, f- a few guys that were in another band, and uh, they hit us up because they were doing a Christmas uh, Toys for Tots show, like a little uh, kind of like pay five bucks to get in and bring a toy kind of thing, you know. And uh, we ended up raising quite a bit of money, and we got a fuck ton of toys because we of course all of our family and friends showed up you know and uh we actually played it was there was one band that played and then we played second and then the band that invited us that was like headlining the thing they played last and after our set the other band got on and they played their set and then afterwards everybody came up to us and they were like dude you guys needed to play last. What the fuck? <laughs> like, that was sick. <laughs> like they, nobody even talked about the other band. Oh like, shit! Either, yeah, which was sad, but at the same time, it made me feel really good. It was my first show. I was super fucking nervous, but like after after we played like one or two songs, I was fucking in it. Like I didn't even. All the people there watching me didn't even matter. You know. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's just, I don't know. It's cool to hear those types of perspective because, like, you know, everyone talks about the concerts they go to. But you don't ever really get to hear, unless you, like, watch very specific, like, podcasts or something, you never get to hear the opposite side of it. You know, you don't get to hear the 
the the band talking about their perspective of you know playing a show because i mean i i I assume it's got to be fucking nerve-wracking i bet you're at like waiting for you to go up there hearts pumping like you know you got the sweaty palms and you know you're starting to stress out about it you're anxious about everything you know what one thing that you probably won't think about that i thought about was like what if i have to take a piss (laughs) <laughs> i was so nervous that i was gonna have to take a piss during the middle of it <laughs> i was like what do i do <clears throat> but, yeah once you get up on there dude you forget you have to piss or shitty oh, yeah. you just you just go for it the you adrenaline take a... takes over yeah we all fucking cheers the shot slammed it down and fucking hopped on stage and then it just, yeah, it was crazy. It, it all goes by so fuck. Dude, we played a 35-minute show, and it felt like like two minutes. It was crazy. Yeah, it goes by fast. How do you transition between songs, like, on that level, right? Like, I've been to concerts, obviously, but, like, you know, some of these people who've toured for so long, like, so long, they kind of have, like, this specific the way they tra- like transition to songs yeah, when you're tracks and shit yeah like do you when you're doing it kind of on that you know we're under our first hundred shows like is there a certain way that you do it or we just uh so the first show that i ever played we were just doing covers so it's pretty easy to talk like in between songs in between songs we would just be like oh you like uh fuck i don't know uh I can't even remember the songs we did. You like August Burns Red? And everybody's like, yeah. And we're like, okay, we're going to do this song. You know? <laughs> and everybody's like, cool, fuck yeah. And then we do the song, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and, and Bird, you you were on, didn't you open up for someone pretty big here in Utah? Yeah, uh, Killbot. Uh, yeah, they were huge. Yeah. Um, we played a couple of shows with them. We we ended up becoming really good friends with them. And they loved that we were just, what did they call us? They called us like mini metals or something. Cause we were just like these like 14 year old kids that just thrashed and threw the fuck down. So they liked playing with us and they knew that we brought a pretty decent crowd just cause like we'd be like selling tickets at school and shit. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. And yeah, Killbot eventually broke up, unfortunately. But um, later down the line, we played a show with this local Colorado band called Havoc. And they're fucking massive now. Like, I think it was a couple years ago they opened for Megadeth. Wow. And yeah, that's pretty wild to think about. That's a whole fucking story in itself that I think I might have told you guys. I don't remember. Well, what's a better time than now? Let's hear it. <laughs> All right. Well, fucking A. So they come into town. We've heard their music. It's really good. We're excited. Because they actually hit us up and we're like, hey, we're touring. Do you have like a venue we can play at? And we had this like one spot where we were really cool with the owner. It's called the Outer Rim. And yeah, we got him a show. They th- they didn't bring in much of a crowd at the time, but it was so good. Like they were so good live. And after the show, we were all like packing our gear, getting ready to go home. And the guitarist, Dave, he comes up to us and, you know, we came with our moms and shit. So, uh, he comes up to all of us and is like, Hey, so we actually don't have enough money to get a hotel tonight. Is there any way we could like, crash in front of your guys's house or something and you know trips mom and dad were just like the coolest parents ever and they were like no you guys don't have to stay outside we have a big enough house and a huge couch come sleep here you know <laughs> so we we all had a big sleepover with havoc playing like super smash brothers on the wii and like just hanging out they gave us all t-shirts it was so cool that's rad and now just to think that they they play <laughs> they play at a with Megadeth and a bunch of other fucking huge bands now. It's insane. Yeah, it's fucking rad, dude. Such a surreal experience. 
You know what I foresee happening too here really soon? Because like, I mean, depending, I, I obviously am not nearly as versed as you two are in like the subgenres of metal and rock, but I really do think that we're going to start seeing even more of an audience that's mainstream focused for a lot of metal and the subgenres where really like it, it it's always existed right like you have like your og bands like everyone knows who slipknot is right mm -hmm. but like i think that as these bands like as these other subgenres are getting bigger and bigger i think there's going to become more and more and more of a mainstream appeal to the point where like you said earlier you're hearing these bands at gas stations where 20 years ago dude there was there was christians fighting against screamo music you know like it, i don't know it, it's just it's cool to see the the growth of it and the and the idea that it's not this you know this what people used to call it, like this devil music or this fucking you know evil shit when in reality at least from my experiences anytime i've ever been around people who are part of you know any type of metal community nicest fucking people on the planet and that's that kind of goes across anyone's usual perspective on it because it's i think when we talk about music maybe aside from reggae it's the most accepting community rap country pop that shit not accepting at all metal yeah. eh, they accept everybody they don't give a shit come have yeah. a good time listen to some good music like but that doesn't exist but as it's growing bigger and bigger people are starting to realize that and starting to enjoy it more and more. Yep. It's, it's cool. funny too, because a lot of people, like, a lot of people that I know that are in metal bands, they were like, some of them were jocks. Some of them were like the kids that just sat in the corner and fucking hung out with themselves, didn't talk to anybody, you know? Like, other kids were fucking nerds and all about science class and stuff like that. It's just, it's all of those groups of people together and then you get this fucking crazy hardcore fucking metal band and you're like oh shit like whoa that dude's fucking ridiculously jacked and looks like all he does is work out all day <laughs> right. you know and then you got fucking some skinny dude fucking pale as the as an eggshell and fucking just fucking going crazy Shredding. on the guitar right next to him you know <laughs> i don't know i think it's fucking funny yeah I also like that there's so many subgenres. You know, there's so many different variants of metal nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know if, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I just think it's cool. I think it's cool when these communities that have been so passionate for so long finally see that big, like push. Yeah, so I'd say that we're there for that for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. And the, and what's cool about it too is it's not just genre specific, really. There's a lot of bands that are now like one minute they're singing, you know, like some fucking pretty thing with some clean guitar, and then the switch the switch just flips, and then it's fucking heavy as shit, and the guy's screaming, and then it'll break, and then it goes into some techno shit, and then like you know they have a fucking rapper on their track yeah. and he's sitting there spitting something and then next thing you know some dude's on there with a saxophone fucking i don't know it's just it's crazy you can do whatever you want with metal like well, yeah it? like i i shared a song in discord where the dude's playing the fucking violin and then it's metal yeah. <laughs> you know like it's just it's it's unique but the, that i think that goes to say the community's accepting of everything and at least keep an open eye to that you go right. you go do that and like rap they're gonna be like what the fuck is going on yeah what's you this know guy fucking doing yeah what, who the fuck <laughs> who the fuck is this guy yeah I mean, it's definitely gotten better as time has gone on like there's definitely because like i i grew up listening to rap and hip-hop and i did for a long time and obviously i dabbled in metal and other things but i've always felt like it's been i get shit for liking it you know because yeah. like that community like the community of rap and hip-hop is toxic a lot of times and it's always who's better who's the best like who gives a shit i just want to listen to good music <laughs> yeah i want to have a good time yeah and 
bands fucking tour, you know, four or five bands deep. So everybody's just family pretty much like yeah. when you get to that point, you know, <clears throat> what's cool too is a lot of bands that tour together a lot. They all fucking will come together and take one guitarist from this band, a drummer from this band, a singer from this band, and then they'll do this big ass super band. Yeah. And then that's even more crazy. And yeah. a, few, a, a few bands have done that, and it's fucking dope. I love when people do shit like that, when they all collab together. Is there any, uh, I guess we were talking about, like, the positives of it. Is there anything negative, like, that you guys have seen over the years? Like, maybe there's, like, stereotypes that are true or things that are bothersome in the in that realm? Mm, vocalists being douchebags. That's about all I know. <laughs> most of them are douchebags. And Not most drummers them, being that's, flakes. That's... Yeah. I don't know if you could probably say that about Kyle because, like, you guys are all fucking tight. But, like, my experience with drummers, it's hit or miss. You can either keep them around for a little bit or they'll just randomly stop hitting you up and you see them in another band. <laughs> yeah, I, no I noticed that here when I started this band with uh, Austin and Kyle. Like, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say they're flakes, but they do have lots more options as far as going from band to band. Yeah. Well, do you, uh, Bird, do you know Murphy's guitar in Mountiful? Yeah. Okay, so that's owned by uh, Aaron now. I, I, I don't want to say last names, but... He was related to the kid we went to school with named Joel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. He, I used to party with them a little bit, and he said that like every time he would go somewhere, he was always asking if people knew how to play the drums. Same thing. They could never find a drummer. <laughs> they're hard to find, and they're hard to keep around. Lucky for me, I have a insanely good drummer, and yeah. I've known him forever, so if I can't find him, I'll just... Um, actually, I'll know where he done. lives. Yeah, yeah, I'll never not be able to find him. He'll just show up. Like, what's I'll up? Find his, I'll find his ass. <laughs> no, I, when I uh, uh, when I first like started playing music, I was the drummer because like I was afraid of that happening. Like I I started with guitar and I wanted to play guitar, and then. Uh, Trip and Hammond were like, well, we already play guitar. So, and I was like, well, I guess I better take a back seat or play something else. So that's what I did. I just played drums. I wasn't bad at it. It was just, there's something about being able to stand and walk around that I like, like on a stage. But like the first show that I played, I was on drums and it was fine. It was just like, I don't, I don't feel like I fit. This isn't what I should be doing. Who was vocals for you then? Hammond. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was. <laughs> I don't know. I see. I need to find. I want to. You guys got videos up somewhere, right? Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. They, they do. We do. <laughs> they need, they need and to go. Dude, honestly, they were fourteen and they were fucking good. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Well. <laughs> There's one thing that, I mean, this, this I guess, is kind of irrelevant to you, Cutlass, but there's one thing that I like to do on my other show when I have locals on, at least locals that, like, we went to school with, is, like, what was your perspective of me, and then vice versa, like, what's the perspective of, like, you? I tell you this much, Bird and Trip, because Hammond didn't go to school with us, dude, they were like the coolest shit, and I don't know if they realized that, but everyone thought they were the coolest shit around. Oh, dude. It was true though. Like they just all like I think one of the biggest things that like is super important with that is those two had their own fashion since like seventh grade. They didn't do the same like they didn't follow the same shit as like local Utah, and that always put them in a different like a different league. And yeah. I don't know, dude. I was always jealous to be to be completely honest. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. We were assholes. Like back then, like I wish I could just slap the fuck out of myself sometimes. 
because like there was like me me and trip would hang out i would have my master of puppets shirt on trip would have like a ride the lightning we we're huge metallica fans we would see this dude just wearing like a like it was around the time i think it was walmart that started like mass producing metallica and other band t-shirts mostly like acdc the shitty ones uh we'd see a dude come in and he'd be wearing his like i don't know ride the lightning obviously from walmart t-shirt and we would give him so much shit we'd be like who was metallica's first bassist before cliff burton (laughs) no i bet you don't fucking know like we'd be doing that kind of shit and like i feel so bad for that kid because he just came to school like happy to show off his new fucking cool metallica shirt and we just shit on him for it you know (laughs) i'm never wearing this shirt again yeah i just that's a whole thing though right it's like because it became and, and i mean this i don't know if this is something we really want to dive into but like there became a skip at some point when punk slash rock slash metal slash emo became an aesthetic and not like a community slash culture where people will just go and like you know like the one you always see is like a nirvana shirt like people like people will go buy nirvana shirts and then like they're like do you even know something that isn't uh smells like teen spirit and they're like what's that you know it, it became like an aesthetic and i mean i don't i personally don't give a fuck because like i i just don't but at the same time it's like why would you rock something that you aren't at least semi-knowledgeable on yeah like you're just that actually reminds me so amelia she has a nirvana shirt or she used to and uh she was at this party or something and i guess this really drug chick comes up to her and is all oh you like nirvana i love kent cobain <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that one. That's the most popular fucking guy. Oh, my boy Kent. Kent. <laughs> fucking oh, Kent. me and Kent. Yeah, go way but back. Yeah, yeah me that cracked Kent. me the fuck up. Me and Clark Kent Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I mean, I don't. I, I guess. <laughs> let me bite my tongue here on something. But I, I think that sometimes people need to hear that they're doing something that's kind of stupid. You know, like. So I don't. I don't necessarily think what you were doing is asshole. Like, I mean, I think you could definitely have been worse. And the thing, the resentment came mainly because me and Trip have had long hair since sixth grade, yeah. and we were made fun of it all the fucking time. So I don't know. Maybe we were just pissed off and hostile over like just being bullied. I guess. You know what's funny, Bird is a. Uh... Cause you came, you came to Woods Cross Elementary in what, fourth grade? Yes. Yeah, Miss Hayes, right? We were in the same class. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had that yearbook, and it's the only time that there's a picture of you with a buzz cut. <laughs> hey, I was finding myself. Okay, I was in the fourth grade. <laughs> Give me a break. When I was in the fourth Hell grade, yeah. I thought I was gay. <laughs> 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 no, nah, it's just, it's just funny, cause like. You know, I, I think that was probably at least the last time I can remember you ever having short hair to go to what you were saying, right? Like you've had it for ever. I started growing it out in fifth grade just because I was like a skater wannabe punk guy. I don't know. But then, yeah, sixth grade came around and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just a metalhead, I guess. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> I'm built different. When you want to you grow your hair out. That's the best excuse. I just like metal. <laughs> just <right>. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, it's it's awesome. just it is weird. It's weird to think back. I'm, I'm trying to oh, think yeah. of what my first impression of you was. I don't remember. But that's grade. probably a good thing. Or not fourth grade, but even just like back then. Like not junior high, high school, because I knew you better then. But like like fourth to sixth grade. I think I just remember you as the football guy. Yeah, that was kind of all we did. <laughs> we would always just, like, even Josh back then, like, we would all just do the same exact thing every every single recess. We would go play football. If it was snowy, we'd go play basketball. And that's all we did. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's all I did. Well, I didn't play football because I played football at 
you know, after school, that was my thing. But we would always fucking play basketball. And then we all got tired of playing basketball because there was this one giant ass kid that would just fuck us all up. It wasn't, wasn't even fun anymore. So then every, every day after school, we are after school, every day at like lunch or recess, we would just play hacky sack. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped playing basketball in elementary around sixth grade when Jimmy showed up. I don't remember if you, if you remember him. Last name Beans. Oh. I just remember yeah. him. He would came and started playing basketball with us, and it was like trying to play with an adult because he was so much better than everyone there. And I was like, ah, cool. I'm yeah, not going to play basketball. tall too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had a kid. Yeah, I remember him. Too. It was annoying. I was like, <laughs> fuck this. I don't want to play anymore. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, I'm going to go back to playing football if you guys want to play <laughs> basketball. <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah, I don't know. I. There, I guess there's a weird thing that we can talk about, which is weird that you don't live here in Utah, but you grew up in a very Mormon area. Indeed. Very, and very Mormon. Obviously, we did. And I don't, I actually don't know, Bert. I don't think we've ever talked about it. Did you, was your family Mormon? No, kind of. So the Smith side of my family definitely was. And. But when I was in Woods Cross, I was never forced to go to church or anything like that. Because yeah, I, I wasn't, never never have, never was. And I've always, right. that's something that I like to talk about just because, like, at least here in Utah, it's not common. And I don't know, there, there, was, there were some shitty things I had to go through at a young age to realize what that all meant. You know, not being invited to certain events and not being able to have sleepovers with certain people because i wasn't allowed at their house <laughs> yeah and i'm like fuck dude i'm i was a pretty nice kid i thought and had always been nice through like junior high and high school but like being able to not go over to someone's house because i'm not mormon was kind of a, a rough one to deal with it's like i couldn't i didn't understand it and my parents like they would try to explain it but, like, how do you explain that to, like, a kid who's trying to understand why his best friend at school can't hang out with him outside of school? Yeah, that shit sucks. Yeah. Yeah, this is, so where I grew up, there was three different schools, okay? There, and uh, one school was essentially a Catholic school. <laughs> the other school was just kind of a country fucking you know my dad owns a farm school and then the other school the school i went to was the mormon school so it's kind of gnarly and they're all within like i don't know 10 15 minutes from each other and uh i was right in between the i lived right in the middle of the the country ass school and the mormon school the mormon school was the better school so i went there um but yeah dude it was it was weird it's it was weird not because i grew up catholic you know so it was weird growing up in that and then being around these other kids that were not the opposite but pretty close to the opposite of that yeah <laughs> like same basic morals but just different way deep into it you know yeah <laughs> like we were just scratching the surface with the shit that we were doing <laughs> we were going to church on sunday and you know not treating our neighbor like shit but <laughs> yeah yeah we were going to church on sunday and inviting our neighbor for beer mm. uh, yeah they're going to church three times a week and fucking having these big ass feasts with you know their 48 family members all in one house <laughs> right I'm like, Fuck. yeah, and they were all like always had the nicest clothes. They all had fucking, you know, they they had everything. So it was like it was weird being around that and trying to fit in because for me, sports was playing football was the biggest thing. That's what I always wanted to do. That's what my brother did. That's you know, that's what my parents liked. So when I was playing football, in uh junior high no in middle school when i when i first started so seventh and eighth grade in seventh grade i played football and i was the 
running back on, well, the fullback on uh, offense and defense, I was a safety because I was just really fucking fast. That's pretty much all it came down to. But anyways, so I did really good. I was fucking. Uh oh. No way, man. Okay. So that's my punk fix. Like, I can't just have all of the same genre. So, like, I need to mix it up a little bit. Hey, Tyler. Hey, it's back. My dad. Hi, friend. <laughs> um, okay, no fix. Do this. Dude, this is kind of tough, actually. Okay, okay. Common Man's Collapse, Veil of Maya, because I need that fix, too. Mm -hmm. it's not safe and if I'm to trying play. to... If I'm trying to just wind down a little bit, I'd probably bring, like... Maybe Foo Fighters' Greatest Hits. Mm -hmm. What if I say you're not like the other? What if I say you're not just another one? <laughs> All right, Tom. Think about it. What's the question? On an island, you can only bring three albums. What do you bring? And please don't say Shania Twain. What the <laughs> fuck am I going to pick then? <laughs> oh, my God. Top's just on an island. I feel like a woman. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just fucking like really feel myself. <laughs> Um, dude, I don't, that, that's tough because, like, I don't know. I'm just really curious as to what Top likes to listen to. Oh, dude, my, my music is just, it's very, very, quite a big variety. I think my first one would be, oh, man, I don't even know if we can say this guy's name in 2023. I'd probably do My Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye. Yep. Mm. Yep. I like. 2014 Forest Hills Drive by J. Cole. I like. And then oh. probably... This is tough because I'm just going to ones that are like... There's no variety. Yeah, I didn't even put rap. Like, yeah. I didn't even think of a rap album. Now I'm like, fuck, dude. Ready to die. That's yeah. what I'd bring. That's, <laughs> yeah, I would probably have to do something like... Something a little bit older. Get Rich or Die Try, just for the vibe. Good album. I feel like you gotta do, like... I got two New Age. Because I was thinking Good Kid, Bad City... But I've listened to that a lot. And I don't think that I want to be stranded on an island with it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but my problem is, is like, I want variety and not just rap music. But I don't know what I would, I don't know what would be a good, like, pick from other genres. Once I can't fucking do Shania Twain, which, <laughs> fuck kind of rules is this? <laughs> What about Creed? You like Creed? You fuck with Creed? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not joking. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little. Um, no, I probably because I'm trying. I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably just go with those three because I was thinking like I really like. I don't know. Yeah, I'll probably just go with those three. I don't want to dig myself into a hole that I can't get out of. <laughs> no, do it. Come on. This is this this is the last three albums you can ever listen to, man. Yeah, it's just tough. Oh man. What is let me pull up my my Google one sec. 
Because I gotta get. Is it Dark Before Dawn by Breaking Benjamin? Is that their first one? I like that album a lot. See, it's silent. I feel like I'm getting judged. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've Wait, ever heard I, that album. I would have to. I would have to know some songs off of it. I'm just trying to think of what their first one was because there's a lot of good stuff on it. I mean, I really like Tool. Dude, I didn't even think about Tool. And I feel like you could like get something out of their album like multiple times over because it's just so unique. But I could also say that about like Pink Floyd. They're all. Mm. Chevelle. I love. I don't know, man. I'm just going to go fucking like. This is going to be a question I'm going to stay up all night thinking about. Because <laughs> I don't have three. I don't have three that I'm just like. like I gave you two. Where I'm like, yeah, I really like those albums. I could listen to them a lot. But to be stuck and those are the last three that I hear forever. Mm -hmm. Five finger death punch, brother. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm out of here. Later, guys. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, I actually shit. went and oh, saw shit. they were touring with Breaking Benjamin. And they were the, the uh, second band. And uh, it was awkward. They did not put on a good live show. There's just lots of flames and, you know, military dads walking around. It's yeah. really, really strange. Benjamin Son. Are they kind of like Three Days Grace? Who? Uh, breaking, breaking Benjamin? No. no. They're the ones that sang, If you feel... So empty, so useless, so something. Okay, then I'm not thinking of them. That's definitely not who I want. That's who that uh... is. <laughs> start a riot. No. No. Wait, thought... that's three days grace. Yeah, that's oh, that is three days grace. Oh, bro. oh, close. They're the ones that are like something's getting in the way. I will try to find my penis. Okay, I'm thinking of someone else too, because if they if they're sounding like that like two thousands dad rock, that's not the band that I'm thinking of. Oh wait, yeah, no, it's not. They do Diary of Jane and that song's fucking whack. Um Is it Avenge Sevenfold that I'm thinking of? Oh yeah. Avenge Sevenfold, brother. <laughs> I'll tell you mine. I would like to hear yours. Mine is, I would bring the contortionist language. That album is fucking just mind blowing. I would bring, um, he is legend. Uh, the seduction mm. or, ah, uh, no, mm. I don't know. Cause I like few too. I like both of those albums a lot. I'd probably bring the seduction, just because that's OG, and then I would bring Scary Kids, Scaring Kids, self-titled album. Damn, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah. Scary Kids. Scaring well, kids. well, what do you think about it? Hates you. He is legend. Is that that's the one with the trying to think of what the album looks like is that the one it's with the got stretch yeah yeah with the party hat yeah that's a pretty good one just the seduction was the first album like the first album that i ever heard of theirs so it's got like a special place in my heart you know right i know every song on that fucking album <clears throat> and few is one of their newer ones but it's fucking oh it's such a good album Ah, but White Bat is such a good album, too. They just got a lot of really good albums. <laughs> just a great band. Dude, for real. See, now I'm looking, at, I'm looking at albums, and I'm like, I don't know. 
Yeah. Because like, yeah, like I don't want to be stuck to just one vibe the whole entire time too. Because now I'm thinking like, do I need some Blink One Eighty Two there while I'm there? I probably do. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a, a tough one. But uh... okay, how about this? We can add two more. <laughs> <laughs> Can actually kind of help. Can one of them be Shania Twain? Yeah, one of them can be Shania Twain. Good. And the other has to be Creed. So, <laughs> yeah, so they go hand have, in hand. Yeah. If you add Shania Twain, you have to have uh, Creed. It's a, it's a balanced thing. Mm -hmm. And you can only listen to them one after the other <laughs> so that you can seductively and sensually masturbate and have a good night's sleep. What about <laughs> Snow Patrol? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't hey, you do you, is. man. We, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> we used to have a we used to have a running joke where <laughs> we would call people <laughs> Snow Patrol because they had they were just fucking dog shit people. <laughs> <laughs> they do that chasing cars song that's like awful that every mom in their forties love. Chasing cars. Um, if you heard it, you would know. Sing it to me. I do. That's I'm the wrong right, person for that. I don't know the lyrics. I know. No. Uh, no, I'm not gonna try. Just I changed my mind. Me. Hum it to me. Give me like a. I need to know okay, what okay. it sounds like. So I can be like. Da, 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 da. I don't know the lyrics, but that's how that's the flow of it. That was. I, I'm playing it right now. I don't know. Don't let those days go by. No. Glycerin. No. <laughs> Glycerin. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I mean, okay. I I would I would definitely take an Audio Slave album then. Oh mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Set it off. Set it off, my children. So good. Well, I'm going to try something. I don't know if this is going to work or not. That's Creed 5. <laughs> Can you hear that? Uh, maybe if I click into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Look at that fucking guy. Yeah, that's, that's Snow Patrol. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Hey, um, I hate to be that guy. But I did see that you were listening to Hoopa Steak. Oh. <laughs> Yo, dog, like, <laughs> you gotta come, you in my, like, you gotta come in my neck you like your that. Feelings? <laughs> I don't even know Hoopa Steak the reason. What song is this? Uh. <laughs> Oh yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you know, sometimes it just fucking happens. Oh, well, hey, I was also listening to Three Doors Down. Apparently, dude, yeah. you were in a mood. Dude, sometimes you just life gets pretty difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you need some. You need some Uba steak at Three Doors Down. Just needed a good cry and a good <laughs> wink. Yeah. If I lie here. <laughs> Oh, fuck. oh shit! Hell All right, yeah. I got one. I got one. <laughs> a band that you absolutely hate, but everybody else seems to love. And Cutlass has one that I'm. I, I understand. I get, but I. I don't know. I, I, I want to, I just don't understand how or why exactly. There's a Maybe lot you don't that. hate them, but There's you said they're that. very like overrated and generic. I don't know who you're talking about. Cause there's a lot of bands that I don't <clears> like that. A lot of people like August burns red. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't like them. That's Can't get enough of them. Oh, uh. I got I got a couple. 
Mine aren't necessarily that I hate them, but I think that they're vastly overrated. Um, U2. Uh, never. Wow, two. Uh, I don't think the Beatles are as good as people say them they are. Thank you. I agree. I concur. Excuse me? I concur. Beatles are whack. Excuse me? I... Oh, dude, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll fucking... I don't care what the internet says. I'll bury myself in this oh, shit. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's okay. Beatles are I awesome. slammed... I hit the couch in frustration and my dog went crazy. Oh. <laughs> I, I just... I've never... There's like, like, don't get me wrong. They got a couple of songs I enjoy, but I don't. There's people who say it's the greatest band ever of all time. And I just, I think that they. We're there's also no high way. on acid. Yeah. I just, I, I don't <laughs> think that they're anywhere near that. There's a difference between bands being very good and you having a sentimental thing for a band. I think of their yeah, hot take yeah. Ones. It's like ACDC. I cannot stand ACDC. Yeah. All their yeah, shit me neither. fucking sucks. Like, it's so, all the same. It all sounds exactly the same. They never did anything different or groundbreaking. It's garbage. But it was, people it was, fucking love them. It was pop music for that time, right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. It was fucking... It was... Uh, Wake up in the morning and feeling like P. Diddy. Yeah. Cash. But yeah, yeah, yeah. for our parents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to put your glasses on and hit the city. But before yeah, exactly. you leave, you got to brush your teeth with a bottle of yak because at the end of the night, I'm not coming back. Yeah. 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 We've been there, dog. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. been there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, there's a lot of bands that I, <laughs> I dislike, but there's only one band that I can say that I hate. Sure. Boston. Fuck Boston. Boston is the worst band ever. Let me pull up whatever their most famous name, song yeah. is. Yeah, name name a song, Bird. Give me a song. I don't even that's not even worth my breath. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll share. I'll share here. Share me a box. Pick a song, they all sound the fucking same. Hey, I was I like uh, I I don't know if I know enough about them to say they suck, but that song specifically is very overrated. I agree with you. If you find another one, it sounds just like it. Okay, I'll test. I'll <laughs> test the waters here one second. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look back. You know who? El you know what else is very controversial? What? I think, and you guys are gonna hate me for this one. I think corn is absolute garbage. Hot dog water. Even their older stuff. All of it. Boom. Yeah. I can't stand it, dude. I can't stand Jonathan Davis. Just whiny and fucking crybaby all the time. To me, it's just, uh, it's it's cringy almost. I, I definitely think that they were a product of the time, and trying to go back at stuff. Like, I there's this, I don't know how to explain it, but there's this thing that happens with mute, like everything. Where like in the moment it was decent, but then when you realize when new stuff comes along, you realize it's so much better. You know, like an example I use is uh, like fast food. Like, why would I go to old school McDonald's when you got something like in and out that's the same price? It's better, you know, service, better food, better quality. And I think the same thing happens in music. Like, I mm -hmm. I don't think I hate corn, but I definitely know what you're saying. It's not. I Corn's yeah. not hitting my playlists ever. Yeah, <laughs> never. I don't want no fucking boom bop to boom dab in the ema. I think the only thing that I like from Corn is uh, <laughs> their their cover Dude. of um, another brick on the wall wasn't bad. I don't know, man. Because he doesn't do all the wacky weird shit. It just 
play the song and it's it's not bad. And corn now is just an EDM concert with Jonathan Davis. It's like, yeah, corn sucks nowadays. It's like, <coughs> but yeah. Anyways, anyways, back to Boston. <laughs> fuck Boston. Also, fuck yellow card. Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just say something because <laughs> I don't know shit about yellow card. Okay. But there was one time where me and Kyle, we were going to Warp Tour. And we were also going to be there with a couple of females. And we drove separate, separate vehicles. Well, when we got there was right when Attila was about to go on stage. And they were like a new upcoming band. And they were fucking, they had just come out with their first album. And me and Kyle were like fuck the, these guys are fucking sick you know and we saw them through the fence and they were getting ready to play and we were like oh shit so we hopped the fence and snuck into warp tour and uh we ended up getting caught and this guy made us buy lighters so he wouldn't tell anybody so we basically paid him to get in but anyways we get in watch the attila show and then there's another band playing I think it was probably like Born of Osiris or something. We were really stoked to go see. But we were watch walking past the main stage, and we hear this band, and the dude was singing, and he fucking had an amazing voice. We were like, what the fuck? Who is this? And then all of a sudden, this dude starts fucking just jamming out on a fucking violin or some shit. And we're like, what is happening? So we go, and we're like squeezing in through the crowd, and we uh kyle looks at this one dude that's like sitting in the crowd and he's like who is this and he's all this is yellow card and we're like who the fuck is yellow card you know and we're listening to him and we're like dude this guy fucking this guy fucks like this guy's badass dude voice of an angel okay he finishes the song and he's like hey guys thanks for hanging in there with me i'm sorry that i sound like shit right now he's like i'm really sick i have strep throat he's like but we're gonna keep it going for you and he's like, so if, if I have to take a break and drink some water, like, I'm sorry, you know. And we're like, this guy's sick right now? What the fuck? Dude, I've never looked at them the same. Wow. Like, phenomenal band live. Are they Ocean's Eleven? Is that Yellow Card? Or Ocean's Avenue? Yeah. Is that, yeah. So I have a fun thing that we can do that would make our show have its own unique flair. Since we're using Discord, I can pull up screens. So we could go through shit together. So I have right here from iHeartRadio the top 25 most overrated bands of all time. Would you guys like to go through this together? Yes. And we'll give our... Uh, Bird, I think you... I couldn't hear you there. I would love that. Okay. So let me know when you guys hop in. I'm in. I'm in. So they have Imagine Dragons, these nuts across your face. <laughs> yeah. no um, Dragon, these nuts across your face. I liked their first album. I thought Radioactive was like, oh, cool, we're going to get a new wave of like different type of alternative music. And now the rest of it, like all their shit since I've could do without. Mm hmm. Um,. I, for some reason, thought that uh, Imagine Dragons was a all Mormon group. I'm pretty sure that all of them are Mormon. It might be. Looks like he's wearing some of that magic underwear. Yeah, it's possible. You agree? <laughs> disagree? Uh, yes, Imagine Dragons. Yeah, bird. Yeah. I think your mic's not picking up as much. I'm not sure. I haven't done anything. I don't know why it's different. I think you just have to talk louder. I think your threshold is just a little... Howdy. Howdy. Yeah. All right. Let's go to this next <laughs> okay. one. Okay. Maroon 5. Ugh. Dog shit. Their first album where they just talk about fucking all the time, I liked. <laughs> anything <laughs> after that, I don't. Dude, they used to I make like... like they used to make like love-making music like... Like Sunday morning and shit. 
I fucked with mm-hmm. that. All the pop shit? No. I, I can't stand. Yeah. You know when it's cold outside and you got yeah. nobody to love. That was when they made some good <laughs> shit. And they decided to go, like, pop. Yeah. I would say... Overrated now, yes. When they first started, I thought that they were a lot better than people gave them credit. Sam? Bird? I don't, I don't have an opinion. I didn't... I just know that a lot of their songs kind of sounded the same to me. Yeah. But I have no opinion on that one. CCR? Yes, yes. Overrated as fuck. Fuck them. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I think I only know of one song that they've ever done. <clears throat> and I think it's, is that, are they the people that do, I see a dead moon rising? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, the that's one. the only song I've ever heard of theirs, ever. And uh, the other song that you've heard in every war movie ever. <laughs> Fortune Son. <laughs> yeah. Down <laughs> there. See, I'm going to have to disagree with you guys. I actually like CCR, but, you know, I I don't know. <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Whack. So, you want to know a crazy story about the Rolling Stones? Yeah. I actually have a cool story about them. So, my wife's family owns a hot spring uh like a well they own this plot of land that has a natural hot spring on it and there used to be a fucking big ass house on it that everybody just called the mansion it was just dubbed the mansion um but these guys used to rent it out from her family and they used to have parties out there because it's out in the middle of nowhere and there's like a giant fucking pool that's all just natural hot spring water and then the you can like hike up this little trail and the higher you get there's more littler pools like up the hill and they get hotter and hotter till you get to the actual where the spring is at you know but these guys used to rent out that place and hang out and have parties over there all the time that's they, crazy were they rude or anything or are they just some dudes no nah, they're super dope no yeah I, I don't i don't really have an opinion on them to be honest i i don't hate them but i don't like them they're all right way before way before my time i'll tell you yeah that. The way about Rolling Stones, as most people probably feel about the Beatles. Yeah, just nah. Yeah, but I, I like the Beatles, so uh, I'm just opposite. Oh God. Um, to me, these guys. If you really listen to all of their songs, I wouldn't say they're overrated, but they are very uh, <clears throat> kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. Very uh pedophile-y. Well fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really follow up with what I was gonna say after that with that. <laughs> <laughs> that and they love California. They do love They'll California. You know that. They very much love California. Um, I'm actually a pretty big fan of theirs. <laughs> <laughs> I have been since I was a kid. You wanna know what got me into them? The Beavis and Butthead song. The roller coaster song where they had Beavis and Butthead in the music video. And I was like, dude, these guys are fucking cool. They hang out with Beavis and Butthead. And then like I got <laughs> in their music and I was like, ah, I kinda fuck with it. And then Yeah, well. I never said my taste was good. That's why I was asking for music the other day. <laughs> Flea is an insane basis though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Flea is probably the best part of that whole entire band. Oh, it's my favorite band. Dude, Dave Matthews. <laughs> All of every single one of these guys fuck. Dude, they fuck. Yeah, yeah they dude. fuck and they don't give a fuck where their shit goes. Hey, I can tell in a whole yeah. ass fucking river. I can tell you exactly what happens when they bring a girl over. The dude does this and he's like I don't have sex. I just fuck. And I fuck hard. <laughs> you know that's Dave Matthews, man. Oh, yeah. 100%. I feel like Dave Matthews would literally try to fuck your ear. Yeah, oh, yeah. he seems like the type. Um, I, I honestly, I've probably heard <laughs> maybe one or two songs in my whole lifetime from them. So 
Uh, I'm. Mm-hmm. I don't really have a thought. <laughs> There's this song he does called "Too Much," and I I quote it all the time. Um, <laughs> I, drink I have too a problem. Much. <laughs> I have a problem where I can't I don't have very good self control when it comes to food. <clears throat> but I always overeat and he has a line in the song that's I ate too much. <laughs> After I eat so much food I just sit there like this and just go too much <laughs> drink too much. <laughs> Radiohead. Hold on, I, think I like Radiohead. To him. Oh, no, we didn't. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a song. I know I know a song from Radiohead, but I just can't think of one right now. OK Computer, I think, is a really, really good album. I mean, Creep's their most popular. I'm mm-hmm. a creep. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I like Radiohead. Yeah. What the hell am I doing here? Yeah. I don't belong here. Wait, yeah. is this the first one we yeah, all yeah, disagree yeah. with it being overrated? I disagree. Yeah. yeah, I do too. I disagree. Queen? Oh, dude, Queen. The best. The best. If you don't fucks with Queen, get out. I don't. I don't fuck with Queen. Dude, how... <sighs> I just I can't stand it. Yeah, like, I like that you zoomed in there, look buddy. At that, <laughs> look at that dick bulge. <laughs> you telling me you don't fuck with Queen, dude? Come on, dude had the voice of a thousand angels. You know what's weird is like I didn't for a long time. I didn't really care for Queen, and then <laughs> I mean I liked Bohemian Rhapsody like everyone does, mm-hmm. and. But I didn't like I didn't like some of their mainstream music, and then I, I don't know I listened to, like some of their other shit. They're, he's definitely talented. Freddie Mercury's talented, but dude, he's a beast. And not only that, but every single person in that band sings so good. Like the way that they could all harmonize with each other at any given fucking second, like it's insane. They they're so good. I don't understand how people doesn't don't like Queen. I, I don't I don't know. I'm gonna fucking respect that they're talented. I just uh I think Amelia kind of ruined them for me. Mm. But gotcha. I don't know. It's like it, it's the same songs over and over again. It's not that they sound the same. They're very like versatile in their sound, but like you know, you hear We Will Rock You, Bohemian Rhapsody uh fat bottom girls fat bottom yeah like you hear the same song so many fucking times yeah, you never like, hear ugh. you never hear dragon attack yeah that's the best one but yeah hey we already yep. talked about yep. that yep. yep whack trash fucking whack get him out of here get him out of here want to... cold play yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I think they're thinking... overrated I always think of Toby Turner. Cold play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've only really heard Yellow. That's the only yeah, Coldplay the only song, song I think I I've ever heard. heard. See, I actually like some of their newer stuff that's more like a EDM alternative like sound. I think it's not bad, but overall I'm not like excited when Coldplay comes on. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't hear enough of them to think that they would be overrated. They're not a band that I hear on the radio all the fucking time. And when I do hear them, it's just, it was all yellow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to disagree. Overrated. Yeah. 110%. Overrated. Get out of Dodge. The only birds ready that, to argue. Let's hear it. The, the only person that has a lick of talent in that band is Dave Grohl. I like what they, I like what they did. I think Nevermind is a great album. I think In Utero is a great album. I don't like the cultural way that people talk about Nirvana. 
because you know it, it's kind of the same thing you'll just only hear come as you are or smells like teen spirit which sucks because they have so many fucking good songs uh i don't know i'm gonna disagree my question is this do you <laughs> think nirvana was the reason hair band or hair met or what do you call it 80s hair band kind of died after nirvana and grunge came out or do you think no. that it was just maybe in mainstream maybe like mainstream like fucking mtv yeah but yeah. as far as the culture no yeah yeah i think 80s just kind of just it dug its own grave and it just died peacefully kind of like disco true you I'll still can fuck, I'll still fuck with some. Yeah, I'll still fuck with some disco. Dude. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I I think Nirvana is overrated, but I still catch myself whenever those like five or six songs come on my playlist or whatever. I'm like, I'm not gonna change it. I'm looking at this right now, and I almost just exited out of that little pop up. <laughs> I was like, oh wait, that's not mine. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Bon Iver, yeah, yeah. dude is I said Jovi so at first. good bon iver is so good let's get a let's it's, get a go, go to go to skinny love go to skinny love because that's the one that everybody knows it doesn't sound like that on the fucking album, but. Well, now I gotta hear the album because that was it's not. So great to get all the friends back yeah, together. Yeah, just skip forward a little bit. With that opening, I was like, ah, yeah, they might be overrated. <laughs> I play whenever somebody busts out a guitar at a party and you're like, oh, I got a better song than that. <laughs> kind of reminds me of something like a teenage girl will listen to while she's writing her diary about how John broke her heart at school. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I that this is the first time I've ever heard of them or heard that song, so I, I can't say that they're overrated. They're definitely not overrated. I don't think. That's just me. I heard it kind of reminded me if I was on a, a Ferris wheel and it broke. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that's, that's just fair. what I pictured in my mind. Bird's just looking down and he's all, ma 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 ma. <laughs> and there's like a start, like a slight drizzle about to happen. Yeah. Stuck in this fucking Ferris wheel. <laughs> Is it going? Why am I so high? <laughs> I don't like the Eagles football team, and I also do not like the Eagles, the band. I am going to say this about the Eagles. Live, they are phenomenal. They sound just like they do on their fucking records, which is very hard thing to do. And they are... None of them... So, like, none of them sing... This, the same. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Every song has a different vocalist. So, like, one second this guy will be singing a song. The next second the drummer will be singing a song. The next song, fucking, you know, the bassist is singing it. Like, it's cool the way they they flip around and do that. I I I like them. I really like them. I don't think that they're overrated. I think they're just fucking good. Shit. Bless. Thanks. <laughs> Bust. Um, I, I don't know. I don't mind them. They're they're not my favorite, but I also don't. I understand why they're popular, and I don't think that they really deserve an overrated. I personally, I think that they're properly rated because they kind of were the the shit for a while. Yeah. Journey, I'll I'll take the reins here. I do think is extremely overrated. Yeah. Journey sucks. 
<sighs> My wife really likes Journey. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Like the ceiling light 50%. I don't want to have something come flying across the room and smash into my head. Yeah. Well, blink twice <laughs> if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> Aerosmith. That should be a fire. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, whack. Yeah, I... 11 is too low. They need to be in the top five. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess I just never understood the appeal. It's like they got famous because he did the what's the one song that everyone knows where he does the crazy vocals. Don't wanna close my eyes. That one? Uh, Sweet Emotion? No. Mm, no. Uh, Love in an Elevator? Yeah, I don't know. One, one of those. those. I, do, I did like the crossover with Run DMC though. That's yeah. yeah, that was a cool song. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Walk this way. Talk this way. Uh I I'm do not say, think they're overrated. It's it's not do you like them, it's are they overrated? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um Dude, my light keeps... What the fuck? I'm going to say hot garbage. Uh, overrated. Bro. Paranormal. Paranormal activity. Dude, my light is just flickering and it just turned off. Paranormal activity. Hold up. Alexa, ceiling light on. Oh, that was fucking weird. That was fucking weird. <laughs> um, I I enjoy Metallica, but I do think that they are slightly overrated, given some of their later stuff. I put them with Godsmack, aka <laughs> Garbage. You still a big fan of Metallica, Bird, or not really? Still fuck with them. I mean, like, Kill 'Em All to and Justice for All. I'll still fuck with those albums heavy. Uh, I can see why people would put them as overrated. Once they did Load and Reload and Saint Anger, they just started going to shit. Saint Anger round my neck. Whack. Get him out of here. I was going to actually say this one earlier, but I didn't want to be like the guy who says Green Day is overrated. Whack. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with Metallica. Their first albums were fucking awesome, and then they went to shit. So. Well, you don't like one, 21 guns. Hold <laughs> down your arms. That's the worst fucking song ever. The song is awful. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I got roped into Green Day when American Idiot came out, and I thought it was the hottest shit when I was like 10 years old. And then I grew Jordan up. American Idiot. <laughs> and then I grew up in the... Not He's so all, then I Then I grew up and I walked a lonely road. <laughs> <laughs> September never ends, man. <laughs> Bon Jovi. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, Ooh. living on a prayer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to say Bon Jovi is the shit. That's just me. Not overrated. I'm going to put it in the same boat as Aerosmith. I don't know. I don't think they're that great. I don't really have an opinion on this one. Oh, yo. Fuck this list. Anyways, brother, here's Wonderwall. 
<laughs> you know what's sad is Oasis Today actually has is dis- gonna be the day that they all come back for you. I like some of their other music because I heard Wonderwall and I was like, what else do these fuckers do? And some of it's not bad, but they definitely don't deserve the fame they have. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Look at that dude. He has chops and fucking bangs. This isn't a does this guy fuck list, because he definitely does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah, he fucks. He, just get a, he should shave his bangs right here and then just put a tattoo that says, I fuck. I just remember all of the fucking... Uh, as soon as I think of Oasis, I think of all of those... Uh, commercials that you would see at late at night where they're like advertising one CD that has all these fucking yeah. like, <laughs> hits on it, and this was always one that popped up. Now that's what I call time. music. Yeah, <laughs> I, I... <laughs> with hit songs by Oasis. I don't believe that anybody <laughs> feels the way I do <laughs> now. There was this I. <laughs> You know, I always heard of the meme, like, people bringing their guitars and they'll play Oasis. Until it actually happened to me. We like, well, it happens every time. Dude, I didn't think it was real. This kid came to a party where he, there's this place in Utah called Tooele. And there's just kind of, like, rednecks and meth heads. And then, like, nice. sprinkle in some, like, really rich people. It's really weird. And uh, there's this kid from Tooele... And he brought his guitar to a party he's never been to with people he's never met before. And then within 20 minutes, like, was like, so guys, I'm going to play some music tonight. Is that cool? And everyone's like, Shh, okay. And he fucking starts playing Wonderwall. <laughs> and I was like, all my friends look at each other because we made the joke all the time. Like, like I made, like, oh. And we just all looked at each other and started laughing. And he took mad offense to that i don't <laughs> that's what you gotta do in situations like that you play the most popular song so that way you only have to play like three chords <laughs> and it's hard to, it's hard to play and sing at the same time so you just play the first three chords sing the first oh! line and then everybody takes over from there yep <laughs> it should just be a rule like how in guitar centers or any guitar shop you can't play stairway to heaven if you go to a party you shouldn't play wonder like it's <laughs> it should be a law yeah yeah um, I don't know if I know Genesis off the top of my head, so I can't really. Uh... Genesis has Phil Collins in it. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. Oh, fuck. And I'm Phil Collins of... fucks. <laughs> yeah, Phil Collins does. Fuck. Oh, wait, no, Genesis is great. The Land of Confusion song with the weird fucking puppets. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. I don't think These they're overrated. Steel. These men are No, nah, me neither. No, nope. good. I think that's the first one we all agreed on. <laughs> oh, here's the second one we all agree on, uh, I think. Yeah, get him out of here. <laughs> Bono, the biggest piece of shit. Yep. We all, we all kind of made the same face. It's like, am I allowed to say it? Like, I agree. I don't. I agree. I agree. I saw that said uh, Kiss was just Juggalos in the 70s. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I, I can't look at Kiss the same now. I've tried, man. I've tried to be. I've tried to go back and listen to it. I'm like, I don't. I don't get it. I just don't I, understand how you look that way and then sound the complete opposite. Yeah. It, it's so weird to me. It's like uh, Takashi 6 and 9 doing rap. Like, yeah. I don't understand, you know? How do you yeah. look that way and then sound that way? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite thing that I have to always play for people. His oh, gun dear. noise. Yeah, this shit, shit is so and, funny. And you have that. You don't think this I have that? look in your eyes. Let me tell you what I see. I see a motherfucker. You have all, you have totally dismissed. You didn't already played it out how you gonna go. 
I don't think you're scared to die. What's your second? He's not scared to die. He has already embraced that. He didn't play it out how it was going to happen if it happened. He's not scared of that shit. I'm looking at him. He's not. He don't got no fear however they do it to him. He don't care about that. Right? He really got a point to prove. That's, it, that's my point. If right? you see it, listen. I don't play around and do but shit. I will say I this. I only attack the people that's coming for me. I said, yo, I fired security eight months ago. If I walk out of here and the nigga come from behind me out the staircase, hung, 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 it was already supposed to happen. <laughs> When well, I listen, nigga, in. I don't know what kind of gun that is. No. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. I don't know. I don't know. That's a different yo, kind of gun. I like, man. <laughs> hang, 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 hang. <laughs> Just like, I, I, I don't know what kind of gun that is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Hang, hang, hang. The doors. The doors. I think the doors are overrated. The doors. Yeah, I, I think that I, – I, I say the same thing about the Doors as I say about the Beatles. I like some of their shit, but I don't understand the massive, massive stardom they have. Maybe it's just because they did it first. I don't know. Maybe there was just a lot of shock value to it, I guess. With Jim Morrison just being a crazy fuck. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely different nowadays because <laughs> these guys were edgy back in the day. And now we got, like, I could pull up Instagram and potentially see an asshole tonight. You know, it's like, it's a whole different world. Yeah. I'm going to say not overrated. That's just me, though. Okay. So we got our top two here. Motley Crue. Motley Crue, dude. I disagree. Oh, I disagree. I, I disagree too. Yeah, I, I disagree. I, I mean, we know those guys. Foot and <laughs> oh, dude. Because I feel like I, if go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I think that Poison, if any, like hair metal band, should be on this list. It's fucking Poison. Well, and I think if you think of drugs, sex, and rock and roll, it's fucking Motley Crue. Like exactly. There's no one, like, that's what they did. And I respect the not give a fuck that those guys had. <laughs> I strive to not give a fuck as much as they did. Yeah, I mean, he's got, exactly. I went and saw them. How was it live? Terrible. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I've seen them twice, and they were both awful. <laughs> they were awful. But I had to say that I saw them. All right, do you guys have any predictions for number one? I assume it's probably <clears throat> going to be the Beatles. It's probably going to be the Beatles, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say Jack Johnson. Uh, who do I think it's going to be? No, nah, I think it's going to be Guns N' Roses. That's a good one, too. Show me Jack Johnson. No way! Damn. Interesting. The Beatles weren't even on this list. I agree. Yeah, because if an article talks shit about the Guns and or about the Beatles, then they're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The world's gonna come after them. Do I agree with this or not? Uh, I, I I agree. I agree. Yeah. Slash is a god. The rest of them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I watched that freaking dude. I could watch that video of Slash ruining Michael Jackson's set over and over and over again. I have not what seen is... this. What is it? It's just Michael Jackson trying to sing a song, but Slash is just doing the longest solo of all time. <laughs> and Michael Jackson's just looking at him like, come on, like, let's yeah, go. Like, what are you doing, dude? This one? It's the, yeah. Yeah, that's that one. <laughs> it's. Uh... It's so funny, dude. Two ads, fuckers. Just... <laughs> <laughs> 
Lapar. Yeah. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Oh, oh shit! All right, I'm gonna leave you guys with one more question, and then I think I'm gonna we're gonna call it for the night. It's already almost one thirty. Um, four members. You get a drummer, a guitarist, a bassist, and a vocalist to make your perfect band. Who are you picking? Band we going for? Um, you can pick what genre, what kind of vibe, what kind of music. Hmm. Or just who you think is best in each slot. Vocalist obviously would be kind of hard. I already got vocalist. Okay. Vocalist. Bucky from Every Time I Die. That's a good one. He's my fucking favorite vocalist of all time. He can do everything. What? What's the band name? Every Time I Die. What song can I play people to get a taste? Dude decaying with the boys. What was that? I said, and he kind of looks like Tom Cruise a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Dog! You paused at a bad time, dog. <laughs> paused on the hog. <laughs> hog. Dude, sometimes you pause on the hog. <laughs> this shit happens, man. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Every time I die vocalist. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> next. <laughs> I'm going to try and assemble the best metal band. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to put Tom Arroyo from Slayer on vocals. It's a good one. I'm going to... Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just going to leave him on bass. Chuck Schuldner on vocals. He's from Death. Uh... Let's go Cliff Burton on bass from Metallica, Scott Ian from Anthrax on guitar, and then Dave Lombardo on drums. Perfect metal band. Okay. That's all. Yeah, I don't know any of those guys. That's not not my not my genre at all. What about you, Top? Oh no. I don't know people. I just thought it'd be an interesting question. Um, I'm going to go for record sales. I want to be a millionaire. So we're going to go Travis Barker on the drums. We're going to go Flea on the bass. Who would I want on guitar? Someone's knocking at my door. 1.30 in the morning, my guy. I'll be right back. My lights just started flickering again. <laughs> There's just ghosts coming. Dude, did what in the show, fuck? Did you show the penis on stream? <laughs> did somebody comment that? No. Oh. <laughs> it's just whoever's knocking on his door right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, did you just show a penis on stream? AKA the streamness? Streamness. I would say Bucky from Every Time I Die. Um. Uh, what's his name? Kyle. Uh... Fuck. I can't remember his name. The drummer, the old drummer for the faceless. Kyle uh, something. Dude's insane. Um, guitar. Uh, Jason Richardson. He, Jason Richardson. Uh, He's in Chelsea Grin now. He was in uh, Born of Osiris. Oh. 
Did he make Chelsea Green good? Yes. Oh, good. Well, he did. Uh, he pretty much wrote that fucking Lilith album. Okay, that was a good album too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. Sauce ass shit. Bass would probably be um. Fuck, I can't remember. Evan Brewer. Evan Brewer is probably one of the best bases in the world. He was also on the in the face list. I think that's it. I think I'm good. Unless I pick a rhythm guitar. Actually, I would do Jason Richardson at rhythm guitar, and I would do Spyros from Structures on lead guitar. Canadian A. Someone was knocking at my door, asking for directions at 1.30 in the morning. Someone was actually there. Holy shit. Yeah. What did they say? They said, hey, I'm lost. Do you know where, um, what street did he ask for? Like 1300 South or something like that was? I'm like, why the fuck are you knocking at my door at 1 in the morning? It's weird. Your lights were on. Like, that seems sus, man. It's like shit. Yeah, shit after that. Yeah. What the fuck? Do you have neighbors? Yeah. And they just happen to choose your house. <laughs> That's weird. That is weird. Super weird. It makes me uncomfortable. Because I've seen videos of people that are, they kind of do that same shit real late at night. And like, Stay they usually the just house. pull a gun on you. Yeah. Like, hey, thanks for opening your door. Let me in. Yes. Oh, man. That's weird. Ugh. Anyways. I would have would've just, I would have just yelled out the door. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? You're not my dad. <laughs> You're not my dad. Ugly ass <laughs> fucking noodle head. <laughs> You're not my dad. All right. Well, I think this would be a good time to wrap up episode one of uh, Trace Papas. I think that we, uh, <laughs> I think we covered quite a bit. I mean, we had two and a half hours of some good content once we kind of got into it and cover some music and shit. I don't know what, I mean, I'm sure the three of us will talk a little bit more about how often we want to do this and kind of what we want to do after, but I don't know. I had fun. Yeah. yeah right it's just cool. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could do fun shit and do like a, now that we know we can pull shit up like that, we could do, I don't know. We could do more shit like we did with the music thing, the underrated, yeah. overrated thing. Yeah. I like or, that. Or do like, I don't know, tier list movies or something. I don't know. We could do all kinds of shit like that. Yeah. See if we can get people, maybe we can put a PSA out of having people send in, their bands to us and we can fucking give them the judgment Get yeah we gladiator have... style like uh, <laughs> uh yeah have a bunch of people uh send us uh shit on discord like their like top three favorite bands and we'll put them all in a fucking thing and do a yeah. list of that or something yeah tell them if they're dog shit or not <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone watching on the back end youtube uh spotify apple music iHeartRadio, wherever you're at thank you so much make sure to let us know what you want us to cover um, there is a video version of this up on YouTube if you want to come check it out, see what we look like. You can see the music videos minus the hog. And <laughs> um, yeah, and from the future here, we'll be uh, keeping in touch on when the next episode is. But thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your night.